From the five pillars of Islam, as we had started this class in this subject matter last week, <clears throat> is the Shahada mean to bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah? And the second part of that testimony is that Muhammad ibn Abdullah وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. And we mentioned some of the benefits around understanding that that testimony can't stand alone with the mere stating that testimony, but that it has conditions that must be along with that testimony, such as knowledge. Knowledge must be with the testimony, the shahada. Person must have knowledge of the religion about the Shahada, the testimony, such as the issue of certainty. A person must be sure about the Shahada and what it means and what it stands for. A person must be sure in that regard from the conditions of the Shahada. A person also must be pure in his worship, not mixing the worship, making worship towards Allah and other than Allah from the creation, such as worshiping angels and prophets and those righteous men, along with the worship to Allah. The worship must be kept pure. And likewise, the issue of truthfulness, a person must be truthful about what he or she believes concerning the religion. Truthful from within inside as well as that which is outwardly and the affairs of truthfulness. We also have the issue of showing love, showing love towards Allah, showing love towards the Messenger, which this whole concept of worshiping Allah is based upon loving him because it is the love that the servant has that will make him or her obey Allah make him or her strive towards the obedience to Allah make that person leave off the bad things that they may desire to do it is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise from the conditions of the shahada to Allah so the person must comply with the uh, commands of Allah and carry them out must comply with the <clears throat> religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submit totally and then a person must accept accept that which comes from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's no compliance and submission except after you accept so the acceptance is one of the and the seventh of the conditions of the shahada to Allah and then the eighth one, to disbelief in all of the false deities that are made deified with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have the first one, al-ilmu, knowledge that would wipe away munafil al-jahl, it would wipe away ignorance. The more knowledge you have, the less ignorance you have in that area. Then you have a yaqeen munafil al-shaykh. If you're certain, then you will wipe away the doubtful <coughs> matters concerning the religion. And you have the khalas, the purity of worship, munafi the shirk, it will wipe away mixing in the worship to Allah wa ta'ala and in the belief to Allah and those things connected to Allah's religion. 
And then you have number four, a siddiq, truthfulness. The person must be truthful inwardly and outwardly. Munafil it will wipe away that which is perpetrating a fraud or that which is <coughs> being untruthful, lying and deceit. And then you have number five, Habba, the love for Allah and His Messenger and love for those who are the righteous and love for that which Allah loves as well and that which the Messenger loves. So, Sallam. <coughs> And the opposite of muhabba is baqba, the hatred and hostility towards Allah, His Messenger, the believers, and those things that Allah <coughs> He loves. As you show hatred towards it, it's the opposite of showing love towards it, which is number five. And then number six, and qiyad wa taslim, to comply and to submit to the compliance, to yield to the compliance, which is from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to comply and to submit with a total submission. If you do that, then this is the opposite of riddah, renegating against the rules and regulation and compliance. And lastly, the qabul is the acceptance. The acceptance, which the opposite of acceptance is terik, to um, abandon, to leave. And then they say, well, zad and thaminan, and the kalima. <coughs> and the eighth thing, that they mention that is a added condition all of the things that someone makes equal as a deity or as a lord or a god to be worshipped with the law then it must be rejected these were the conditions that we wanted to mention from the class earlier and something happened with the technical part so inshallah ta'ala we give a brief overview in that regard. Also, one of the things we want to mention in conclusion, the issue that uh, is very hot in the news, the issue of the shooting that happened in Texas, the shooting of the black man that was stopped by the police and he was killed in front of his girlfriend or fiance and the children as he was reaching for his license and uh, then the shooting of the officers by the snipers and all of this goes back to something that's very complicated the racism in this country and the ills that the people still suffer from that goes back far beyond the legislation the doctrine the, uh, the, 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 the doctrine that they wrote that the blacks, the Negroes, are three-fifths of a human being. If you understand the theology behind that, then you understand that it means nothing to take the life of one. His skin is that which politically they call black because he's not a human in the first place. He's three-fifths of a human being. And we also understand that some people, they feel that the Muslims shouldn't be involved in this, that this is not part of the religion. This is a type of um, being extreme or being um, um, Afrocentric or, or pro-black for those who are against being Afrocentric or pro-black that you talk about these affairs. And worse than that, some of the Muslims, unfortunately, from other countries, they feel the same way. And not just the issue between the different African American Muslims in this country that feel either we should be um, involved or we should have sentiments about this or that we shouldn't. But it's also a foreign issue. So we want to deal with the foreign issue and the domestic issue in light of this. Firstly, we should remember that Black lives do matter. All lives that exist matter. And we understand this from the perspective that Allah, the mighty, the sublime, He mentioned, Ya Yuhannas inna khalaqanakum min dhakum wa untha. In Surah al Hujurat, which is one of the famous Surah chapters in the Quran, where Allah said, O oh, mankind. So Allah is addressing all of the human beings. He said, Indeed, what is meant in English, we have created you from a male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلِ لِتَعَرَفُوا 
and we have made you in nations and tribes so that we can despise one another? No. So that we can hate one another? No. So that we can kill those from amongst that we think and feel or inferior to us while we are more superior to them? No. These are none of the reasons Allah created male and female and created people to races, tribes, and clans. But rather Allah said, He did that لِتَعَرَفُ So that you all can know one another. You can identify with one another. You can learn about and from one another. And this helps the existence that we have to have between ourselves on earth as human beings. And then Allah said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتَّقَاكُمْ إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ The one that's most superior, the most noble, the most high rank and the level of respect and so forth has nothing to do with male and female, neither the color, the tribe. But Allah said, أَتَّقَاكُمْ The one that has most pious, the one that is most obedient to his Lord, the one that is uh, most upright in his dealings with the people and the creation on earth, then this is the meaning of the one who is most noble. So what we have learned in America, the noble one is the one who has the most money. The noble one is the one that has the most fame. The noble one is the one that he plays sports or he sings or he performs very well. The noble one is the one who has the best physical image. The noble one is the one who <clears throat> the society dictates that he's noble. Well, we have all of these different unfortunate barriers between us and setbacks that amount to the likes of the freedom to kill because of a person's color or creed or background or religion, then we understand that these barriers should be removed. And the first way to remove them is the education about these issues. So we should understand that firstly as human beings, because Allah said, Ya Yuhanas, that He has created all of these people and all of them they are the same except the one who has the piety and the sight of Allah. The most righteous from amongst you, the most noble, the most important. These are the righteous people. And this is why the most famous of human beings are always the prophets and messengers. The prophets and messengers. So this is the first thing. When it comes to the human being, the piety, the righteousness, the being fair, these are the things that make you noble. And this shows that <clears throat> everybody life matters. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mighty sublime said, Ya ayuha nasi taqwa rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidatan wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha min huma rijalin kathir wa nisa'a. Again, O mankind, verily we've created you from a single soul, being Adam. We have created you from a single soul, being Adam. And we created for him, from him, a mate, meaning his wife, as a mercy, as a helping hand, as a companion, as one that he could <coughs> benefit from in this life and be with in a lawful way. And from them, miraculously, all of the human beings thus came forth from them. So this again, Adam, Allah mentioned, created him, and from him his wife, and then we came. So know for surely that this is the first man, regardless of what people say from their history and what they learn from um, other cultures and all of this talk about the Asiatic black man, then Adam is the first man. And we understand that the word in Arabic, Adam, means a man of color, a man of black. So it's indicative of Adam being black. And that everybody comes from that seed, showing again, everybody lives, they matter. Including the black lives, they matter. And the Prophet Wasallam, he is the only prophet that came from other than 
Ibrahim. All of the prophets and messengers stem from Ibrahim, Abraham, except Muhammad. He came through the lineage of the son of the prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, which is Ismail. And when you talk about that being the case, then the prophet himself came from a lineage where Ismail's mother was black. Hagar was black. And we understand that the Prophet wasallam himself, he was married to uh, Soda. And Soda was black Arab. A lady with black skin, but she was Arab. And the Prophet had more than that as people around him that were black. Many of the times, the people only think about Bilal, the famous guy who called the call to prayer the Adhan in the movie The Messenger. And that everybody wants to name the black guy in the community that caused the Adhan, and in most cases improperly because he was not taught the right way. They want to call him Bilal, or he wants to say, I'm Bilal. But we understand that Bilal, although he was from Abyssinia, Habashia, Ethiopia, that there were many other companions around the Prophet, many other people that accepted Islam. <clears throat> like the likes of Bilal that was from African continent. And you had Arabs that were black, like we mentioned his wife, one of them Soda, which means black. And you had a Badr, a Gathari, who was a black Arab. And we understand the other companions that were black, that they were in the hundreds when you enumerate them. In the history of Al Islam, we understand that the Prophet loved the likes of those companions, and that some of them in the battlefield they died, and the Prophet held them in his arms crying because of the death of that person or mourning as that person he was black. The Prophet took. <clears throat> people to marry that were black to the Arabs that were, not black, that were not black like the story of Zayd ibn Thabit now Zayd ibn Thabit and, uh, or, and, and Osama Osama bin Zayd Osama bin Zayd pardon me Osama bin Zayd not Zayd ibn Thabit Osama bin Zayd when uh, Fatima bin Qais came and said to the Prophet Sallam, uh, Muawiyah proposed to me and uh, the other companion uh, proposed to her. And they didn't know that each one had proposed to her. It is not proper for a man to propose to a Muslim lady while another Muslim has done that. If he knows that someone proposed, he cannot propose on top of that man. So the Prophet Sallam so don't marry Muawiyah. Don't marry uh, <clears throat> the other companion. Uh, but marry uh, Osama bin Zaid. And Osama bin Zaid, <clears throat> mashallah tabarakallah, was from the Africans. And she married him based upon the recommendation of the Prophet Sallam. And this was stated in the hadith that she only married him because the Prophet commanded or recommended and much good came from that um, union. The point is that when you look up these issues and you refer them to today, do you understand that even the prophet himself was not a person who felt that the black lives didn't matter. Rather, they, ma they, they matter from amongst the Muslims and the non-Muslims. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَلَا تَقَطُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَمَ اللَّهِ do not just kill. Allah has prohibited that you just kill. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Man qatala nafsa bi ghayri nafs aw fasadin fil ar fa ka'anna ma qatal nafsa jami'a Whoever just kills, whoever just takes a life and he makes unrest in the land and makes <clears throat> all of this uh, mayhem. Then Allah said, 
it's as if that person has killed all of humanity. Subhanallah. So when we talk about these issues, let it be known firstly for the African American that thinks that this is not an issue of concern for the Muslim African American. Because there's some people that think like that. No, this is has nothing to do with being Afrocentric. If I look like the guy that just took five bullets in his head and three in his chest, I'm not going to be concerned. If my wife is the color of the guy that just got gunned down by the police as he was reaching for his license, should I not be concerned? The kufi and the thob does not change our reality. It may change our religion, but for the white man, for the cracker, for the, as they say, the, the redneck, the hunky, white America, we still niggas. And that's how they view us. And that means we're endangered species. We're endangered species, except that Allah protects us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we're endangered species in their eyes. So we should be concerned. As for, barakallahu fikum, the Arabs in this regard, then they feel like what's happening in Palestine is a big issue. And they raise monies and they protest and they cry and they uh, make campaigns and they have... Um, organizations that you know raise these issues and they preach from the member the blessed um, stand that you preach on Juma about these issues openly the Syrian uh, conflict and the refugees that are there and those that are pouring into the United States you have the crisis in Yemen all over the world and in Libya and all of these places but no one feels like that about the issue in Somalia. No one feels about uh, the people that are refugees from Niger and uh, 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 Nigeria and the different parts of um, the world uh, that this is the same equality. Why? Because the people have this concept that it doesn't matter because of their skin color. And while the people are the people are uh, uh, paying attention to what's abroad. And we're not saying turn the deaf ear to anybody. Everybody matters. But what about the situations we have here in America with our own people here that are American citizens and we're uh, facing all of these things every day that are the obstacles and the odds against us? No one talks about it. No one cares. No one has talked about putting things in place. And this is because of the um, philosophy that you know the black lives they don't matter subhanallah and we talk about respect and recognition those people that came from other countries they should remember that when they came in the 50's and 60's and even the 70's as, 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 as late as the uh, late 80's and 90's most of the places of worship most of the masajid and we're not talking about temples from the nation of Islam. We mean places where the people have became Muslim and they were praying. This was on the hands of the African Americans. Those people didn't come here and start building and making places of worship. Either they were in their homes um, in the closet Muslim. Or they would come out and pray and uh, become part of the um, process or the achievements of the African Americans and then in most cases it was a small storefront or a, a, a raggedy shack that they had as a masjid so the people that had money that had come here and become doctors and lawyers and or engineers or what have you uh, businessmen with a lot of money then they took advantage by using their monies to help and over a period of time they became in charge and the black people became like Rosa Park in the backseat but the problem is that people, again, they de-emphasize the value and the history and the, uh, moreover, the blood of the people because of their color. And lastly, one of the brothers, he asked me about the issue of the protest. As some people have an idea, for us in America, we should protest. 
When we talk about the issue of protesting, we understand that some of the scholars from other countries, other than Saudi Arabia, other than Saudi Arabia, like in Egypt, they have legal verdicts where they say that protesting outwardly is okay. They call it in Arabic madhahirat. You openly go out and you make a show of numbers, a show of people, a show of voices. Whether you have signs and slogans or you're just um, chanting, ch chatting, uh, chanting, whether you're just chanting or, or stating some slogans, all of this is under the umbrella of protest. And we know from back in the 60s with Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, the protests changed the way that people looked at things in the South. It molded the issue of um, being uh, sprayed by water hoses, um, attacked by dogs and hit by white men with billy clubs and being silent, tolerating it. It molded the fashion of showing the power of the voice. And we find this uh, power of the voice, something that Allah has mentioned in the Quran when he says, La yuhibba Allah jahra bisu'i min al-qawli illa man dhulam wa kana Allahu samiyun alima And Allah doesn't like that you openly uh, talk bad about an individual, spread evil with your tongue about somebody. This is a hated thing in other Islam because it puts people against one another. It rallies people to get... Uh, ready to become hostile and it is a straight mechanism for fighting and bloodshed. So Allah does not like it. But he said, Laman Dhulam. But the exception when you are oppressed, then Allah, even the thing that he dislikes, Allah loves it at that point. Why? Because it is a uh 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 uh, uh it is a um catalyst for seeking the justice by the tongue. And the Prophet Sallallahu wa ala alihi wa sallam, he said, Man yara minkum munkran fa yagayhu biyadi. And the Sahih Muslim by <coughs> Sayyid Abi Sayyid Qudri, he narrated the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Whosoever sees the evil with his hand, and let him change it. Fillam yastatir fa bilisanih. And if he's not able to change something by his hand, use his tongue to change it. فَلَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ And if you're not able to change it by the tongue, then you change it in your heart. Change it in your heart. The scholars, they mention this means that you hate it, you abhor it. And the Prophet said, وَذَلِكَ عَدَ عَفُوا imani. This is the last thing you can do to show your Belief and the religion hate something that's bad, dislike something, feel bad about something in your heart, show a disdain for it inwardly while you do not say nor do something about it because of the inability. To have from amongst the scholars of the oldest university, Islamic university. Ashar Sharif in Cairo. I heard the fatawa, the question and answer about the protesting, and they said it is okay. And others said it's not from the scholars of other countries. And then they replied that it is not even considered revolting against the leader because. You can revolt against the leader in a lot of ways. And there's a minority, they said in their books, of Salafi scholars. Men they follow and they claim the way of the Prophet, the companions. That's one generation. Tabi'in, the second, and the Itba'a Tabi'in, the third. They follow that way in theory and methodology. There's a small minority, they said, that says that the protesting is considered revolting against the leader. So you shouldn't do it. But when you talk about the issue 
of those people in Azhar being considered either from the people of Sunnah or not, then this is a long debate, a heated debate. As you have many scholars that lived and died and they were considered either Hadawi, meaning followers of uh, Hadi of Yemen, like the likes of Muhammad Wazir, Muhammad Al Amir Sanani. But many of the scholars still consider them to be from Ahl Sunnah. Although they were Hadawi, meaning followers of him, and Had Hadi, Hadi, followers of Hadi, was a person of astrayness, no doubt. And they themselves made uh, refutation against his teachings and many of his um, preachings and um, those things that ultimately came back to destroy the people because of the severe deviation in those beliefs and practices of the Hadawi movement of uh, Yemen during that time. You have the likes of Imam Nawawi and uh, Imam al Hajjim al Asqalani, which some scholars have said, and this is like very, very, very few, they are not to be considered um, from the people of Sunnah. Because they had some aqa'id from the asha'ir, some belief and principles that were wrong, that were that of the people of the group called asha'ir, the ashariya. While others say they are from the people of the sunnah. So when we mention the likes of these issues, then we understand that The youth, the layman, the student should not be so quick. And this also for the scholar as well. We talk about these issues. To pass judgment or to say that the person who understands or feels or deems that for the people in America in this situation, going to the streets, speaking out, protesting necessarily automatically makes them deviant or this is a way against the way of the Salaf because this is an issue of Ijtihad trying to solve a very unorthodox way of dealing with the human being it's called cold murder because you're black and Wallahi even if it be the origin of this is as they say, the shepherd be kafirin. As some scholars have said, this comes from the kuffar. This was one of the positions of Shaykh Huna Mugbil, that the Yani al Madahirat and the Qilabat or the Demokratia and Shatna Kuffar, that democracy, as they call it and as we know it to be, has nothing to do with freedom. It's a system. That they have where they're up over the people and they want to gain world domination. Had the whole democracy. This is the real democracy. And not that people are going to be liberated and freed. This is not true. And we also have the issue of voting and the issue of protesting. All of them, many of the scholars like Sheikh Mukbil of Yemen said these are from the affairs that are foreign to Islam and the Muslims, that we took them and adopted them. However, Mubarakallahu Fikum. Likewise, you have um, these issues, such as the voting. Other scholars have mentioned, if you find that there's a muslaha, there's a benefit and a, for the Muslim who needs to use it. As this is a clear rule in the sharia of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Naam, a mashaqqa. Yani, naam, al mashaqqa. Uh, that difficulty 
allows a person to do something to bring the ease that normally you wouldn't be able to do. And this is a principle. And sometimes people use it um, in a way that's debatable, whether it's legitimate to use it in this way or if it's out of context. But I need mean, difficulty necessitates that you do something to bring the ease. And this is a ruling the religion that stems from the Quran, the Sunnah, and it is from the principles of the scholars of fiqh, how to apply and understand the religion. And we understand the Tabarakul wa Ta'ala mentioned قَدْ فَصَّلَ لَا مَا ذَا لَقَدْ فَصَّلْنَا مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Naam and Allah said, and we have made clear to you that which is prohibited upon you. And then Allah said, إِلَّا مَا ثُرَتْتُمْ بِهِ Except that which comes out of dire necessity, dire need. You understand there's five principles the scholars mention when they talk about dire need, which is called the rura. One of them, yani, is your deen. If it's something uh, that puts your religion in jeopardy, then this makes it the rura. You have to do something about that to save your deen. It says the aql, your sanity. If it's something that's going to harm your sanity, you have to do something about it. It's the second thing of the rura. You have to do something about it. Well, I'm wild. Your wealth is threatened. You have to do something about it. Uh, 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 th this is the third issue of the rura. And uh, they said, yani, well, well, nefs, your life, if your life is in jeopardy, you have to do something about it. And the fifth one, they said, Barakalofikum, um, well, ir, your honor, if your honor is being attacked, you have to do something about it. Now, and so these are from amongst the things that even if the person sees the protest, usli is not from the religion. Oh, Tashabbihi al kufar is from the ways that came from the kufar. Al laysa yani men salaf al salih that they didn't do it. Is there's a um, unauthentic reports? It said the companions protested in front of the Kaaba, marched in in in, in Mecca. La, yani they came out and they prayed and they walked and but they were not protesting. These are unauthentic, forged narrations. But the point is that. When a person's life is in jeopardy to the extent that we see right now in America, we can go back to the Trayvon shooting, Allah Musta'an in Florida. We can go to the choking of um, Eric Gardner, the guy who was hustling cigarettes outside of a man's store, and the man told him to leave, and he didn't, and then the police was called, he choked him out. We can go to the Allah Musta'an, the shooting of Michael Brown, although he's still in. Um, uh, flavored cigars from the quick shop and was, uh, you know, apparently someone smoking reefer and drinking beer and what the youth do, who are not guided, both Muslim and non-Muslim in America, still, uh, you know, the, the cold gunning down like the way that he died, Allah Musta'an. And then we have the likes of the Sandra Blanche, you know, how m m mysteriously she became um, hung in a jail cell after the clear video of, of the um, clear, um, um, outrageous, um, outlandish conduct and, and, and brutal handling by the officer. And then we have the likes of Allah Musta'an, now this issue. The guy being killed like this in cold blood. And uh, then people retaliating, shooting officers. So it, necess it necessitates that some solutions be found. That we are not quiet about this at all. And some kind of way use that which is a, a, a strength to get the people to understand that this will not be tolerated or set back and viewed and watched like a movie theater or some cartoons, but this is serious. It's serious. And all we have to see is when the blood of others are spilt, how serious it becomes. And the white people are shot, 
or if he pricks his toe, oh, it's a big issue. Oh, he got pricked. Oh, he died. Oh, he got killed. What a crime. Oh, it's horrible. The black get killed. It's like a, a pin drop in the room. You hear nothing. And this is a mentality. It's tied to the three-fifths of the human being. This is an issue that is tied to the, the, the racism of old. This is an issue that is, is, is plaguing us in the states um, in the way that other people cannot imagine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us farasa. We have the mas'ala azima. We ask Allah to give us clear insight as this is not an easy thing to deal with concerning these issues. Wa nas'ala Allah and yusallimana min hadhi shurur. We ask Allah to protect us from this evil. Wa an yaj'al biladina aminan min kulli hadhi qatal ul qital ul jarima. We ask Allah to make our land, where we live, our country, free from the likes of all of this type of killing and fighting. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the people to what's right. That is, to obey Him. You submit to Him. And only by that submission and that obeying Him will the color issue go away. As our <coughs> late and uh, dear al Haj Malik Shabazz, he said, better known as Malcolm X, the racism will not go away in this country until the people accept Islam, until the people accept the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallama taslim al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> protect us, forgive us for our sins, guide us aright. Anything I said of good is from Allah. Any mistakes or <clears throat> that of shortcomings is from myself or the shaitan. Wallahu bariyamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh wa sallam wa barakatuh wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa Over on. Student voice over on.